Hello and welcome to the video by Trump Excel. I am Sumit Bansal and in this video I will show you how I created a dashboard using the data from the series Game of Thrones. So let's get started. Now before I show you how to create this dashboard from scratch, let's first see what all is there in the fully functional dashboard. Here I have the dead versus alive numbers for the characters. Uh, I have taken the data for four seasons of this series. I know series five is as of now airing, but I've not included that data. So here you see the number of characters alive versus the number of characters dead. I also have the dead versus alive numbers by prominent families in the series. So I have Baratheon, Greyjoy, Lannisters, Starks and Tullys and uh, the green line represents the number of characters that are alive versus the red line which represents the number of characters which are dead. Here at the top right I have the episodes data so I have this list you can see there is a scroll bar and you can scroll down and it would give you the list of all 40 episodes. You also have the functionality to sort this data by selecting these radio buttons. So as of now this data is sorted based on the episode numbers but if you want to do this by say rating then simply check this radio button and you would have these episodes sorted by the rating with the best rating at the top followed by the other episodes. Similarly you can do this by US viewership numbers as of now you can see these are zigzag lines but when I click on this it would give me the viewership numbers the best viewership number at the top followed by other episodes in a descending order and it also gives you these season number as in this episode was in season 4 and you can see that as time goes by this series is gaining prominence you can see all these season 4 episodes have a, a much higher uh, viewership as you go down it will become 3, 2 and 1. Here at the bottom left I have character data first of all there are these checkboxes and when you select or deselect these checkboxes the data here would update based on the screen time of a character in the selected seasons so if I select say only season 1 and not season 3 and season 4 I would see that Eddard Stark has the maximum screen time here but if I select season 2 as well then Tyrion Lannister takes the kick so this is how this sorting is working here I have character name I have their status dead or alive along with this smiley or if they are dead then this skull. I have the screen time in the selected series in the selected seasons and the person who has portrayed this character. There is also a functionality when you double click on any of these characters name here in this column you would see that this part here at the bottom right would get updated. So as soon as I selected Tyrion Lannister, his picture got updated along with his status, he's alive, and his allegiance which is to House Lannister. But if I click on someone who's not alive, say Eddard Stark, then you would see that it gives the same data. The name here changes, status, allegiance changes, picture changes, but there is also this small scroll which would tell you how this character died. So in this case it says executed by Sir Elian Payne at the order of Jeffrey Baratheon. And similarly if you do it for say Catelyn Stark you would see that it says throat slit by Black Walder Rivers. So this is how this dashboard works. Now let's see how we can create this dashboard from scratch using the backend data. So here I have the backend data for the dashboard. I have many tabs with data. This one is character data tab and I have uh, these names which is uh, the character name, the person who has played this character, the screen time of this character in each season. So I have season 1, season 2, season 3 and season 4 and their total screen time. I have the total number of episodes in which that character has appeared, their status which is dead or alive and then I also have this column where I've identified when did this character die in case it did. So in this case if you see here Eddard Stark died in the first season. Similarly if you look here Catelyn Stark died in third season. So this is where I've identified those series, the season number. I have that data of death by and you can see that they, these are text data that I've got from a Game of Thrones wiki. So I copy pasted this data for all the characters who are dead. I have their allegiance so for all the characters for almost all the characters I would have this data uh, so for example Tyrion Lannister has allegiance to House Lannister 
along with this I also have uh, character images and uh, I have to keep this data separate for two reasons first is that I would need to have this image fit in one cell you can see that this is one single cell which is C3 and I need to do this and I'll show you why but since I had to do this I did not keep it in the same tab as character data although I can do that but I just put it in a different tab and uh, the second reason is that it it is easier for me to show you how to make this dashboard so it's your choice completely if you want to keep all the data together so here I have all these characters along with these images I have the episode data here so I have all these 40 episodes along with the name of the episode the rating US viewership in millions and the season again I have kept it in a separate sheet because I would do some calculation and I want to show you how it changes but as a good practice it's good to have all the data together all the calculations together and then finally have the dashboard so that there are three parts to it the data the calculation and the presentation now I also have this calculation tab here and I've already pre-formatted it so that it takes me less time to show you how to populate this but believe me it will never be so simple uh, whenever you start making the dashboard there would be many many iterations and you would have a rough draft and then you will improvise it so it will take time but for the purpose of this video I have this all set so I'll quickly show you how to get all the data together and then create this dashboard and finally this is the part where I create the dashboard so this is the template you've already seen a fully functional dashboard in this case what I'll do is I would put numbers and charts and show you how everything comes together to create this dashboard so let's get started first by getting these numbers which is uh, alive versus dead I would go to the calculation tab and here I have this deceased versus alive uh, cells so I would simply pull the numbers but before I do that one good thing would be to convert this data character data into an excel table and doing that would really help me in creating formulas because then I would simply use the name instead of coming back and using these ranges so what I would do is simply select any cell press control T and as soon as you press control T it opens the create table dialog box here you would see it has guessed this range correctly but it's a good idea to always cross check my table does have headers so I would keep this checked and I would click OK so now it has converted into a table you can see that there are banded rows if you want you can simply go and uncheck this part here so you would can simply go here and say I don't want banded rows uh, also I would name this table so whenever you click on any cell you would have this design uh, tab for table tools and here you can change the name of the table here I would simply call it C data or character data and I would hit enter now in the calculation tab the first thing that I need to calculate is the number of people deceased versus the number of people alive so to do that I would use count if formula and here in range I would use the table name C data and I would start with square bracket and you can see that how it's helping me create these formulas because I can simply use the table name go with the square bracket as soon as I type the square bracket it will give me the name of all the columns and here I need to go for dead or alive so I would select this end uh, the square bracket close the square bracket and say if this is my range and my criteria is deceased and now when I hit enter it gives me 48 similarly I can simply copy paste this formula for alive as well and change this reference to alive and it gives me 69 so now when I have these two numbers I would go back to the dashboard and here I would go to insert text box and I would insert this text box here and I would simply go to the formula bar and give the reference of this value here which is calculation B6 and you can see 48 comes here similarly I can duplicate it by pressing control D and change this reference to B7 which is the alive number and you can see I have alive number is 69 I would put this here and this one here and this would not change because you could have simply put a, a text box and type 69 into it but 
if you refresh the backend data then these numbers are dynamic they are linked to a formula and they would automatically update now you can give it a fancy formatting you can change the font here so in this case if it's alive maybe I can go for a green color change the font to maybe this one and increase the size and there are a lot of things that you can do uh, in this video I will not spend a lot of time explaining how the formatting works because uh, that is something that can be done later and that may take a lot of time so in this video I would simply explain how to create these numbers and these dashboards so my second element here is dead versus alive by family so here I have the family names and I need to identify how many characters are alive versus deceased in each family and to do this I would use a combination of formulas so I would use some product here and there would be two parts to it first is I need to check whether the character has this name in the name of the character and whether the status is alive or deceased so first we'll check for the name the family name in the character's name so I would search this text A10 in the, all the name all the character names so I would use uh, the table reference C data character and see what happens when I select this search part and press F9 it gives me an array of errors and in some cases there are numbers so whenever there is a match whenever in characters name it finds this text which is Baratheon it would give me a number but if it doesn't find that it would return an error so I would combine this with is number and what is number would do is now return me an array of trues and false you can see it gives me false whenever there is uh, no match or no uh, this is not found but it returns true whenever there uh, it finds this name in the character's name now I would simply multiply this with another set of trues and falses based on whether the character is dead or alive so here again I would use C data dead or alive and I would say this is equal to this thing here and I would press F4 to lock it so what's happening here is again this is returning an array of trues and falses based on whether the character is alive or dead so if I press F9 you can see it gives me all this array of trues and falses now what I'm doing here is I have two arrays this one which is again true and false based on whether the name is there and this one which is true or false based on whether the character is alive or not and only those numbers would be counted where this is found and the character is alive so now if I close this bracket and hit enter it gives me five which means that there are five characters from the Baratheon family who are alive similarly I can just drag this down and it will give me all these numbers I can also replicate the same formula for deceased so I would come here paste this formula change these references and it should be done and now when I double click it gives me the number for all the other families so you can see that in Baratheon family there are five people five characters that are alive versus three that are dead and similarly in Stark there are four versus four now I would use this data to create a chart uh, a simple bar chart so I would go to insert and here I would insert this 2d column chart and you can see that I already have this data plotted and I just need to format this data so I would go to format series and change the color and again as I mentioned I would not spend too much time explaining how this coloring works but uh, you can play around with it and do it the way you like it maybe you would want to keep it say dark red and green in this case I have chosen the lighter shades but this is how this chart can be made simply copy this chart and paste it in the dashboard to a little bit of formatting remove these titles chart titles everything and maybe have the legend at the top things that you can easily format and place it here and then you can align this chart here so this is how you can create the dead versus alive by family chart now let's come to this episode rating versus and viewership numbers and uh, we saw that there would be radio buttons so to insert those radio buttons or option buttons as some people call it 
go to the developer tab if you do not have the developer tab simply right click on any of these tabs go to customize the ribbon it opens excel options dialog box check this option developer here it would be unchecked as soon as you check this and press ok this developer tab would be visible now to insert a radio button simply go here go to insert and you have this option radio button click anywhere on the worksheet and it will insert this radio button I don't need this text so I would simply delete this and keep this button here similarly I would copy paste this press ctrl D and it will create a duplicate put one here at US viewership and this one here at rating now when the radio buttons are inserted there need to be something that changes when you check or uncheck this radio button so you would have to link this to a cell in the dashboard or in your workbook so that when you check something changes and then your data updates so to do that if you right click on this radio button and go to format control it opens this format control dialog box within control you have these options checked and unchecked I would keep this one checked and you would have to specify a cell link in this case I would go to episode data and here I have the radio button uh, checkbox cell link I try and keep all the interactive controls cell links together so that it's easier to maintain in this case there would be two sets of controls first is these radio button the scroll bar and the other one would be in the calculation tab in this case this cell is the radio button cell link and I press OK and see what happens now this is checked and if you go here you would see that it says 1 here but when I go and I check this radio button it becomes 2 so what's happening is based on what you select what you check this number would change and I would now use this property to create a list of episodes that can be uh, sorted based on the selection so let me select episode uh, number episode number here and let me come here another thing that I want to use is this scroll bar so I've already inserted this scroll bar but you can let me show you how to do this from scratch again go to the developer tab have this scroll bar option click anywhere it would insert this thing this scroll bar you can resize it like any other object and now when I've aligned it perfectly I would simply right click go to format control and within control option I would say the current value is 1 the minimum value is 1 the maximum value here should be 31 the reason being because I have in total 40 episodes so if it scrolls up to 31 my 31 value would be here and 40th value should be here incremental page change means wherever you click at the tips whenever you click on the tips then it changes by 1 and page changes whenever you click in this area then it would change by let's say 5 and again I would have to give a cell link so I would go to episode data and here I would say this is my scroll bar cell link and see what happens when I scroll it these numbers would change again this is a number that is dependent on the scroll bar so whenever someone changes it the data should change so we would now configure that data here now the idea is to first extract the data that is selected here so if I've selected episode data then I first want to extract episode data if I've selected say viewership data then I want that if it's rating then I want that data and then based on that data set I would sort it and show it in the table in the dashboard so I need to first do one thing which is here you can see that episode uh, number here is the first column in my episode data so here if you see episode number is the first column rating is the third column and US viewership is the fourth column so I would simply use a small formula and I would say if this is equal to 1 then give me 1 else give me this plus 1 and the reason I'm doing this is because now I would use this as the column number so if it's 1 then I would want to return the first column here which is episode number if this is 2 which means if someone has selected ratings then I would want to return the third column and if it is 3 then I would want to return the fourth column so in this case let me keep it 1 now I would use index formula select this entire array press F4 to lock it and I would use the row number here I would use rows formula and 
I would simply lock the first cell reference. So now here it's J3 is to J3. Rows formula gives you the number of rows between this reference. Since I have locked the first one, when I go down, it would become J3 is to J4. So this would become two. And as I keep going down, it would get incremented by one. And column number here would be this number, F4, to lock it. And now when I hit enter, it gives me one. I can drag it down for 40 records. And here I have 39, so let me drag till here. Now, see what happens if I make this 2. When I make this 2, it would give me the rating numbers because it's taking the third column number and it's returning all the rating numbers here. Now, the second thing that I need to do is I need to make these values unique. So, for example, if you look at this, there are many episodes that have got the same rating, which is 8.5, but I need to make these these numbers unique. So to do that, I would simply use a small trick. I would do this K3 plus divide this number by a very small number. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the row number. The row number would be unique for all these values. I'm dividing this number by a large number. You can use any other number if you want so that all these numbers would become unique. Let me show you what I mean by this when I hit enter it gives me 8.500001 and when I double click you can see that now I have 8.5 a couple of times in this data but now all these are unique this is 8.500001 while this is 005 and you can see that if you have it again it would be some other number so now I can sort this data and what I need to do is I need to identify uh, whether I want the large numbers or small numbers so for example in this case if it is say episode number then I would want this in an ascending order where it would be one, two, three, four. But if it is say ratings, then I would want the maximum rating at the top followed by uh, the lower ratings. So what I would do is again use an if formula and I would say if this cell I1 and I would lock this is equal to one, which means that if I've selected episode number, then use the small formula. This is the array f4 to lock it and I would use a rows formula again because it would specify the kth value in this array so what I'm doing here is this would return the smallest value but when it goes down it would use the same array but since row would this would become 2 because of the rows formula it would return the second smallest number and then third smallest number and then so on so now this formula is made so if this is one, which means if I've selected episode number, give me the smallest one. But if I have not selected episode number, if I've selected rating or US viewership, then give me large number because I want the maximum rating or the maximum viewership to show up at the top. Again, the same array, F4 to lock it, rows, and I would lock the first L3. And that's it. My formula is ready and when I press enter, it gives me 9.800029 because 9.8 is the highest rating and when I double click you can see that I have the top rating at here and then it's in a descending order let me make it 1 when I make it 1 these are in an ascending order when I make it 2 or 3 these are in a descending order now I have these numbers what I need is the position of these numbers in this this data set because now then I would use that position to extract the data so I would simply use a match formula here this is my lookup value this entire array is my lookup array and I'm looking for an exact match so now when I press enter it gives me 29 and when I double click it gives me all these numbers which means that now my data would be sorted the first value the first row should be the 29th row in this data set which is this one because this episode got the maximum rating and if I select say 3 here it would be 37 which means that this episode here got the maximum viewership which is 7.2 million so now everything is all set I would simply extract the data based on these numbers so I would simply use an index formula this is my array f4 to lock it this value here is my row number and my column number would be columns because I'd want 
the first column and then when I go to the right I want the second and third and so on so similarly uh, as we do it in rows I would do it with columns so that I would lock the first one so this is this would return 1 when I go to the right it would become 2 and 3 and so on and now when I hit enter it gives me 37 which is the episode number and I can simply drag it to the right till here okay I might not have locked something so in this case it's both right so I also need to lock this column here so I would press dollar in front of O so that when I go to the right this doesn't change now it's all set I would simply double click here go down drag it to the right and you can see that I have the data for all these episodes so I have uh, I have the episode number I have uh, the title I have the rating viewership and the season and see what happens when I change this when I make it one it would all change so this is the data that I would be using in my dashboard if I make it to see what happens it would give you the episode number the episode title and the maximum rating here now all I need to do here in the dashboard is refer to that data but I also need to make sure that the scroll bar works so here again I would use an index formula I would go back to cal to episode data and I would select this entire thing this becomes my array and now in row number I would again use rows formula lock the first C18 so what happens is when I this is the first row it would return 1 and when I go down it would become 2 3 4 so I need this but I also need to make sure that when I scroll that number should change so I would add the scroll bar value which is here and I would press F4 to lock it and subtract 1 from this the reason being that uh, if the scroll bar value is 1 then here in the dashboard if the scroll bar value is 1 then this would return 1 the scroll bar value would, would be 1 and then I've subtracted 1 so that it would be nullified And but at, when it becomes 2 then it would become 2 this entire value would become 2 and now in column number again I would use columns formula do the same thing lock the first J4 here and I'm done and see what happens when I go to the top it gives me 29 when I click here it gives me 32 because 32 is the second value in this array when I press it again it gives me 38 because 38 is the third one now all I need to do is drag it to the down, drag it down and drag it to the right and it gives me all these values now see what happens when I click on episode data this data this data set updates itself where the episode is in an ascending order but when I click on rating it sorts this in a descending order similar is the case with US viewership when I click on this checkbox this radio button it sorts it in a descending order so this entire thing is all set one minor thing that you can do here is you can also use conditional formatting so that when you check this box this would get highlighted but this is something that I would leave for you to do let me now quickly move to this part which is the bottom left part where I would show you the character names with their screen time now the first thing that I need to do here is insert those checkboxes so I would again quickly go to the developer tab and in insert I have this checkbox option I would select this and press anywhere in the worksheet and it inserts this checkbox I would again press control D thrice to have multiple checkboxes because I need it for four seasons let me space it out a bit so that it looks better and you can also change the name of these checkboxes so here I would make it season 1 here I would make it season 2 let's make it season 3 and this would be season 4 now the idea is that whenever I check any of these seasons or more than one then this table should get updated based on what selection I've made I also have a scroll bar similar to what I had here so when I use the scroll bar 
the list should also update so to link these checkboxes to cells right click here go to format control and here you would have this uh, unchecked and checked I would keep it checked and the cell link would be this cell here and again you can see that in blue I have kept all those uh, interactive control cell links so this is let me delete this chart because I've already pasted it in the main dashboard and you can see what happens when this is checked it returns true but when it is unchecked then this cell link would have false similarly I would quickly do this for all the other seasons so here this is selling for season 2 here it's selling for season 3 and here it's selling for season 4 you can see that I already have a scroll bar cell link here so if I click on format control here you would see that this is the scroll bar link uh, just to show you the settings it's a uh, minimum is 1 maximum is 110 here because uh, 111 here because I have close to 120 records uh, but again this is something that you that would change based on your data set incremental change is 1 and page change is 10 now let me keep all these checked the idea is that when I have these checked these seasons checked I need to extract a list of character data so I have to have character names here their status their screen time and who has portrayed that character so to do that I would start from here I would first go back to my original character data and here I would copy paste this entire list because I need all these character names and I would use the screen time to sort these characters the similar way I did for episode data uh, I need to get their status so or what I can simply do is make it more dynamic go back to character data and link it to this cell here so I would link it to A3 and now if in case you change the backend data this would automatically update similarly in case of status I would go back here and select dead or alive So now when I double click I have the status for all these characters for screen time I would have to ensure that I only have the screen time for those seasons that are selected here in these checkboxes so what I would do is simply multiply the screen time for each season with these trues and falses so what happens is B1 multiplied by this number because this is the number for season 1 and I would lock this B1 because as it goes down it would not change and then I would have B2 F4 multiplied by season 2 value plus B3 F4 multiplied by season 3 value and B4 again F4 to lock it multiply by season 4 value and now when I hit enter it gives me this screen time now the problem here is that Excel stores times and dates as numbers so in this case this is again stored as a number if you want to display this as hours and minutes I would have to do a small formatting technique so I would go to format cells I pressed control 1 to open this format cells dialog box I would go to custom and here I would simply use HH which is for hours MM and if you want it in seconds then you can use this data as well or if you only want it in minutes then you can use MM in square brackets and you can see it will give you 222 minutes 39 seconds now when I hit OK it gives me this data you can go back and cross check here you can see it's 222 and 39 seconds for Tyrion Lannister which is right in this case but see what happens when I uncheck season 1 then this data updates now it's 169 minutes 51 seconds let me keep this checked again here I have played by I would go back to character data and select who has played it now I have the data in place I have all these characters and the data in place what I need to do is again sort based on their screen time so to do that I would again use the same technique I used in uh, the episode data 
I would simply make these values unique. Now, in episode data, there was a higher chance that same number of episodes have the same values, say in case of ratings or viewership. In screen time, it's less likely. But again, as a good practice, it's good to make all these values unique. So to do that, I would select this and then use rows formula lock the first cell reference which is E17 by pressing F4 and divide it by a huge number here and when I double click oh, I can because there is nothing in the adjacent cell I would have to manually drag it so now when I've done this all these values have become unique now I need to find the position of these values here so again I would use large formula and this is my array and the position of the first largest and the second largest would be given by the rows formula so I again press F4 to lock the first cell reference and now when I go down it becomes 2, 3 and 4 and similarly it gives me the first largest, second largest, third, third largest and so on so now when I hit enter it gives me this value again this is a number if you want to show it in the same minute and seconds format simply go to con uh, custom formatting and use this custom format now I would have to identify the position of this value in this array so to do that I would simply use match formula this is my lookup value this is my lookup array F4 to lock it and I want an exact match so I use 0 here and this gives me the positions and you can see that I have all these positions if you go back and you say deselect season 2, 3 and season 4 and have only season 1 selected you can see that these would change now I would use these position numbers to get the data but before I do that let me show you one thing if I deselect season 1 and select season 2, 3 and 4 you would see that Eddard Stark has the screen time of zero, sec 0 minutes and 0 seconds because this character died in season 1 so if that is the case then I would not want him to show up in my list at all so I would also have to use this check for this condition and then extract the data so to do that I would use an if formula and I would use an index formula within it this is my array its entire thing F4 to lock it and my row number here would be given by this position so I would press F4 thrice to lock the column this column so that when I go to the right this doesn't change and first I would need to check for the screen time so I've used column number as 3 in this array and I would check whether this is 0 if this is 0 then I want this to return a blank else return another index formula and now I would extract the exact data so again use this array press F4 to lock it this is my row number press F4 thrice to lock the column number and the column number here would be given by the columns formula so again I would use the same technique I would lock the first reference so that when it goes to the right this becomes 2 3 and 4 and so that it gives me the first column second column and so on now when I hit enter it gives me this value Tyrion Lannister I can simply double click and you can see that it gives me all these values up till here but all those characters that have not appeared in season 2 3 and 4 or appeared but have died are now no more in this list similarly I can I can just select this go down and drag it to the right and I have all this data I have their status I have their screen time again I would have to format the screen time so I would press control 1 go to custom and here make it mm colon ss so now I get this data now see what happens is in this case Tyrion Lannister is at the top because based on these three seasons he has the maximum screen time but if I deselect these and select season 1 you can see that in this case Eddard Stark is at the top because he had the maximum screen time and Tyrion Lannister is here somewhere at the fourth one so now this data has been sorted all I need to do is refer this to uh, refer these cells in this data set so here the character would be this cell but what I also need to identify is how what is the scroll bar value so again I would have to use an index formula and this sorted data would become my array press F4 to lock it going back to the dashboard here I would use rows formula 
I would lock the first reference so that when I go down it becomes one two three and so on I would add scroll bar cell link so I would go to the top and add this number press F4 to lock it and subtract one from it so that uh, if it's at one then I don't get the second record I get the first record and now for the column number I would simply say one here and now when I hit enter it gives me adult stock let me drag it down and it gives me all these character names and when I change the season you can see that now this list automatically updates it's sorted based on the selection I can simply use the same formula here as well so in case of status I would go here paste this formula and change the column number to 2 and again double click I would keep this this column here uh, blank because this is where I would have the smileys and the skull again use the same formula screen time make it 3 and portrait by make it 4 and again simply double click here oops can't double click so I would have to drag this down and double click here I have to shift this a bit double click here I would also have to change the format again go back to custom number formatting and make this mm in square brackets and ss if you put mm in square brackets what it will do is even if it is more than 60 minutes it would show here but if I only keep it say mm then it would not it would only show you those minutes so this is why I've put it in square brackets and now to insert those smileys and checkbox uh, skulls I would go to insert here and in insert I would go to symbol and within symbol I would select wingdings and here in wingdings you can see that I have this smiley that I've used and I also have a skull so I would use this and insert it here let me close this I don't want to insert the value here maybe let me do it here in this cell go to insert symbol and put first insert this one and in the other cell I would insert the skull here now the problem here is that if I use this in a formula I cannot keep the the font the same as these fonts so in this case the font is Calibri but I can't keep this Calibri see what happens if I make this Calibri as of it now it's wing, wingdings but if I make this Calibri you can see that now it says K and N so this is one issue that you would have to take care of so you cannot keep the same font so what I would do here is I would simply say if this is equal to a live then return K else return oops, comma else return N and now it will give me these alphabets K and N let me not use this but what I would do here is I would apply Wingdings font here so when I do this now it gives me these and this is why I had to create a separate column because I cannot keep the same font for this and this now when you have this created if you want to show uh, the skull in red all you need to do is go to conditional formatting go to home conditional formatting new rule and here simply use this formula select this D17 but I don't want uh, to lock the number so I would just say dollar D17 is equal to deceased and if this is true then I would format I would go to font color and I would make it red and if you want you can also make it bold and now when I click OK oops I would again have to check this okay. I would remove this dollar as well and somehow it's not working let me try again D17 oops my bad I have to make it C17 so it will be dollar C17 is equal to deceased 
then it becomes red so now you can see that I have a smiley in front of everyone who's alive and uh, a skull in red color for all those who are deceased now if you change these you would see that this updates if you change this here you would see that it updates as well I don't want these this data so I would remove this I only want these top 10 records maybe I can give it a nice border to it so maybe this would be the border color and give a border to it so now I have this table ready you can see that now when I unselect any of these seasons I have this record Edward Stark had uh, the most screen time in season one but he's deceased so you see this icon you see his status and you see the name now the final part of this dashboard is to create this now this is some image that I got from Game of Thrones wiki to give it a good look to the dashboard but you can use any other image or you can if you want you need not even use any image here the idea is that I want an, uh, the picture of this character when I double click on this I want the name I want their status I want their religions and I want the way they died in case if they died now before I show you how to create this I need to show you how to enable the double click functionality where when you double click on any of these characters name the data here would update as of now if you do it you would see that this formula comes up which is in general the case with a worksheet so what I need to do here is I need to use a simple VBA code here I have this code already written you can see it's a short three line code and I would go to GOT dashboard right click and go to view code and here I would double click on GOT dashboard so that it opens uh, the code window for this worksheet and I would paste this code and you can see it's a simple three line code uh, let me quickly take you through it it's a before double click event code which means that before when I double click it is done before uh, something happens with the double click so what happens usually is when you double click it gets you into the edit mode but before getting into the edit mode this code would be run here there are two parameters by value target as range and cancel as boolean and I'm using both of these so let me show you how it works the first thing that I'm checking here is if the target row is more than or equal to 17 which means that if the row is 17 or above and less than or equal to 27 which means this row so if it is between these rows then it would work and again I have and condition and target dot column is equal to 2 which means that if the row is between 17 and 27 its column is 2 which means it could only be these cells if this is true and if I double click on this then the remaining code would run else it would not run it would go out of this if loop if that happens then first thing is cancel is equal to true, true which means that when you double click and it gets into the edit mode that would not happen if you make cancel as false it would happen if you make it cancel as true it would not happen and this is the line that has all the magic in it here I'm saying calculation dot range b147 which means in calculation tab dot range b147 which means in cell b147 put this target value which means that if I double click on John Snow in calculation tab in B147 this name would appear and let me show you how it works so let me keep this window open let me double click on Tyrion Lannister and you can see that it did not go into the edit mode I double clicked on it and now when I go to the calculation tab here in B147 which means this cell you can see that in B147 this name has appeared in my case I don't want it in 147 I want it in 140 so I would quickly go and change this to 140 and now let me close this and again let's see if it works so now if I double click on say Arya Stark I would go back to calculation tab and you can see that this name has appeared here in cell B40 so you can see that this code has worked the code that I had you can change the code by pressing alt F11 it would open the VBA uh, code window and here you can make these changes but you can see that this these three line code is working perfectly now all I need to do is based on this character profile name I need to extract this data which means that I first need to extract the status and here I would simply use uh, index formula my array would be C data table that I created and it would be dead or alive 
my row number here would be match formula I would have to use match formula I would look up this cell this value which is Arya stock in the array which would again be C data character name and it would be an exact match and the column number here would be one because I'm anyway taking only one column which is dead or alive and now when I hit enter it gives me alive let's see what happens if I click on Catlin stock I go back and it gives me deceased I also need to get similarly uh, the other names as well so let me quickly copy this formula here and paste it here um, I don't want this dead or alive data so I would simply delete this and instead I would use played by and now when I hit enter it gives me the name I need to get the allegiance value here again let me paste this formula and change this column here I would select allegiance and it gives me house stark by marriage and house tully by birth and then death by in case if it happened so now here I would have to use a small formula and I would say if this value here is equal to alive then give me blank else give me index or I can simply paste it and then now change this and here instead of dead or alive I can use the death by column and now when I hit enter you can see that I have all the data now let's see if this is working so I would go back to the dashboard and here I would click on double click on Robert Baratheon and when I go back to calculation you can see that this cell has updated itself with the, the name on which we double click and all these values have also updated now I need to put an image of the character here so that when I double click on this, the name that image should update I would go to character images here and what I need to do here is I need to select this cell not the image but the cell that holds this image I would press control C and now I would go to home and paste as linked picture and now when I do that you can see that it is now a linked picture which means that if I change this reference to say C4 then this image would change let me copy this image and put it here in the dashboard as of now it shows me some weird picture let me resize it so that it fits here uh, the reason being because it's referring to C4 in this cell but if I change this reference go back to character image and select this cell it would now show me the image of Tyrion Lannister so you get the idea that this image can update if you change the reference and that is the property that we are going to use so we would create a formula here we would create an index formula this entire Thing is the array I would also include the cells that have images press F4 to lock it and now I need to find the row number so I would use match formula here go to calculation and use this cell which means the value on which I double click or the name on which I double click I am matching this in this array in character images array this entire column I need an exact match so this would give me the row number and I want to return the value or the reference of the second column so in this case since it's a picture it would return a reference if I put it in a named range so see what happens here it gives me zero and let me show you what I'm doing here let me double click on Tyrion Lannister I go back here it's giving me zero but if I put something in this cell say I put hundred here it would return 100 which means that it's referring to the right cell but it's not giving me the image as of now but what happens is when you put this as a named range it would start giving you that image so to create name range I would go to formula define name and I would say here character image and I would paste this formula here and press OK and now I would go to the dashboard click on this image and instead of referring it to a cell I would use that name range here and now when I click here and 
see what happens when I double click on Jon Snow that image updates when I click on Tyrion Lannister if I click on uh, Arya Stark or Robert Baratheon you can see that these images would quickly update because the name range here is changing now I have the name here the rest of things are really easy all you need to do is show his name his his status his allegiance and how he died and that would be the easy part so what I would do here is I would simply insert a text box again maybe and you can also use an image if you want or a text box it really doesn't make a difference go back to calculation here I would select his name now see what happens it shows Robert Baratheon you can do a bit of formatting I'll show you a little bit of how it can be done so I can select a bigger font if you want middle align it and do all sort of things with it now see what happens when I double click on Jon Snow this value updates and when I double click on these this image would update this value would update and now all you need to do is similarly create more of these text boxes so in this case if I want to say show the status then I would simply go here and change the reference I would go to calculation and say this cell reference so I would select this go here press equal to come to this calculation tab and select this and it will give a life if you go and select say Catlin Stark it will say deceased and again you can simply have another text box here not have anything in this but rather some static text which would be status and resize it and maybe remove these borders you can say no line maybe if you want you can change the font to this one and similarly all you need to now do is copy this and here I would say Vigians and change this value to 42 oops not 42 43 and change this a little bit so that it fits perfectly but again this is formatting that you can do the final thing here is if the character died then how did the character die and to do that I would have to go back to this calculation tab and here I'll show you again the same trick that we have done there as a picture so I would what I would do here is I need this text in a scroll bar so I would insert a scroll bar here in images I have this thing I would simply insert this and refer this to this cell value so now it has throat, throat slit by Black Walter Rivers I would put it on in center and now you can change the format a little bit maybe you don't want to fill but let me first show you how to do this so I have this value here and whenever you change this here you would see that this value here updates itself because this cell value is changing now again as you do uh, you did it with these images I would also do it with this here so all I need to do is maybe go to the right because I don't want to unnecessarily distort other cells and columns so I would make it fit perfectly in one cell and right click on this go to format shape properties uh, do not move or size with cells now I can restrict it in one column and similarly I would also do it for one cell so let me put it here now it's perfectly in one single cell which is this cell here let me also resize this a bit now what I need to do is I would copy this cell again go to home paste as link picture I have this link picture here and I need to just simply copy paste this picture in the dashboard as of now it shows nothing but it will when I create a name range so again 
I would or instead of even creating a name range you can directly refer it to this cell here and that should do the trick so what happens is in this case if I double click on edit stock it's already selected but let me click on Catlin stock you can see that this text updates itself again there are some minor minor formatting things that you can do but the idea is that you have now made this dashboard dynamic where you can select these checkboxes these radio buttons uh, you have the scroll bars where you can scroll through the entire list and whenever you double click on any of these characters name it will show you the image the name of the character the status whether it's live or dead legends along with uh, which house or which uh, lordship he is he owes his allegiance to and the way he died so this is how you can create Game of Thrones dashboard in Excel. If you're looking for the download file, it's right below this video. Let me know in the comments section if you have any questions, queries, if you liked anything, learned new thing, or if you disliked anything, just let me know in the comments section. That's it in this video. Thank you and have a nice day.